demons of seduction and demons of addiction. Warning, don't let those suckers tear you apart. Don't let them destroy you, your life, or your destiny. I'm going to show you how they work. Please pay close attention. This might be the difference of life or death for you and or your loved one. Pat with Pat's Two Cents. I want to do a spinoff of this weekend's message. Some of you don't realize how the demonic works. And I want to share some of the little secret devices they use. When you deal with the demonic, you've got spirits, let's say, let's call them the demon of seduction. Then you've got the demon of addiction. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things you'll find is how certain demons work hand in hand. There's a scripture in the New Testament where Jesus talks about how when a person is swept and garnished, basically talking about a house as a parable, but talking about us in essence. When a house is swept and garnished and the demons have been driven out and they're out there in torment because they can't find a place of rest and they determine they're going to go back into the house that they once possessed. And the demon says to himself, I want my house back, so I'm going to go and get seven others stronger than I, and we'll all get in there and set up house again. So the point is, I put, I broke it down in regular everyday terms. That's what happens with us. And then it says the, the condition of that man is seven times worse. So what you have to be careful about is understanding when you are operating under the influence of a demon. You can be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that with a mighty burning fire, and still be highly influenced by the demonic. And one of the areas that we can be influenced strongly is by the spirit of seduction and the spirit of addiction. It, it hit me. I used to talk to the Lord about this for years. Why is it people who get abused physically, emotionally, psychologically, keep staying? Why don't they leave? And I thought it was the fear of not having the finances, fear of uh, where do I go? What do I do? The feeling of being lost out there by yourself. But what I really believe God is showing me is there is the spirit of addiction. Now, what does the spirit of addiction do? It, it, it's like a stronghold. You really got a hold on me. And, and they don't, we don't realize how they work. They work hand in hand with the demon of seduction. Now, a lot of us think of seduction as, mm -hmm, they're trying to turn me on. But that's not always the case. What Satan does with the spirit of seduction, the demon of seduction, how that works is finding something that we like, the familiar spirits that have been assigned to us from birth. They know being around us, they kind of know what we like. Mm -hmm. So they will send a gift in a package and make us want to open that package. No one is going to blow up in our face, but because they know what we like, they constantly present these packages in our lives. Sometimes it comes in the form of a lover. Sometimes it comes in the form of an occupation. Sometimes it comes in the form of of a decision. Now, I'm trying to keep it where it doesn't sound complicated here. Let's draw a picture. Let's say that Appleby is the husband or the boyfriend or the date. Let's say somebody that likes orange head. 
He looks at Orange Head. Orange Head looks at him. They both feel that attraction pulling at them. But Orange Head doesn't know that Appleby is controlling, narcissistic, domineering, jealous. She doesn't know that. She sees a handsome debonair man. And she likes a man that takes control of manly man. Bad boy. So she's drawn in. And he entices her and he lures her. And so the spirit of seduction is working. Now, it's not about him getting her in the bed. It's about him getting her to buy into his program. Because, see, here's the thing. You got two people who are extremely needy. You don't see it in the domineering man because the domineering man has the front. They know how to put on this persona. But the reason they are drawn to needy women who are insecure, who don't have that confidence, who don't have the ability to just make that solid decision and stand their ground mm -hmm, is because that man is so needy and insecure. And that's why he needs that kind of a woman. He's very insecure, loaded with fears. Controlling people are a lot more fearful than we recognize. So we end up being intimidated by the controlling person. So Appleby, here we have this controlling person, and we have Orange Head over here, and she's sitting there being enticed by him because he looks like all the man she's always wanted. And he knows how to do the dance, talk the talk, walk the walk, dress the dress. He knows how to present himself. So he gets her locked in. They get engaged. They get married. What happens? As soon as that ring click, goes on that finger, yeah, it's over. Party's over. The play is over. The costume comes off. The mask comes off. And Orange Head sees who she really married. Because now that Applebee has got her on lockdown, he's going to tell her who to talk to, who not to talk to, where to go, where not to go, what he wants her to wear, what he wants her to think, what he wants her to want. And as long as she's willing to be his puppet, now they have consummated the marriage, they are, they are locked in, they are one. But what she doesn't realize is he has now taken control and she has given him permission to take control. Now, here comes the spirit of addiction. Addiction is working with seduction constantly. I have heard, I remember I was talking to Lynette last night. I have heard of older women saying, there's no better sex than the sex that comes after a booty whooping or after a fight with your man. Now, to me, that's sick. That's just totally sick. But there are women that really buy into it. Why? The spirit of seduction working with the spirit of addiction. Addiction works in drugs, cigarettes, alcohol, people, places, activity, things. And what you don't realize is when you deal with a needy woman like Orange Head, she's becoming addicted to this man who's operating under the spirit of seduction, narcissism, control, domination, intimidation, the whole nine yards. So now what happens is he wants some drama because he feeds off of that. He feeds off of her fear because he's insecure and he's fearful. And he wants her to think he's all that and a bag of chips. He's bigger than life itself. So he presents himself like the animals in the kingdom that, that spread their wings and, and roar loud and do all kind of stuff to make themselves appear to be bigger to their enemy than they really are. And this man who's dominating sits there and starts an argument for the fun of it. 
Now, at first, there may be argument after argument. Then after argument, there's apology, there's reconciliation, there's the honeymoon again, and then we're in the bed making, oh, the most romantic love. And then afterwards, life goes on until he's in the mood for another flare-up. And when he's in the mood for another flare-up, this time it might come with a slap, it may come with a kick, it may come with a push, it may come with a slap, it may come with a choke, it may come with a punch. I think I said slap twice. Anyway, bottom line, now we're getting into the physical. Now we're getting violent and volatile. But what happens? He puts on a costume now that she is familiar with from the time they were dating. And now he puts on the crocodile tears. And he's apologizing with all his might. You know, I love you. I can't live without you. I need you. And now she's feeling motherly towards her baby. Oh, he didn't mean it. Now the, the spirit of seduction and the spirit of addiction is working because the more she buys into his crap, <laughs> the more locked in and addicted she becomes because now he's really got to pile on the love making in the bed after she's got the black eye. First, he's got to pile on the lies and the cries and the tears, all the drama. All the begging, pleading, and sorrowing and apologizing. Now she is silly enough to believe it because of the spirit of addiction working. She buys in. She's getting locked in harder and harder. When it gets to the point where it's almost unbearable and she can't stand being at home, she can't stand when he comes home, what you'll find is she really doesn't understand that she's locked down from the brain. She could have left any time while he was at work. She could have made her way of escape. But in her mind now, she's locked down. Why? The spirit of addiction. Just like a dope addict, a person who's on heroin, a person who's on crack, whatever they're, they're hooked on, what they do is they get high, high, high. And then when it wears off, they crash. And they've got to search for that high again. Well, in the marriage, they're constantly crashing. And he knows how to put on the high. He knows how to get her back to that high to keep her locked in and on lockdown. You have to understand how dangerous that is. I watched a woman die over 10 days. I didn't watch her. I heard about it. I knew the woman. I watched her get beat by her husband. And this man beat her for 40 years of the marriage. And I could not understand why that woman would beg him to let her stay. And what happened at the end? All her hair had broken out. Her legs were filled with varicose veins, bruises, scars. Her skin was horrible. She was skinny as a rail, and she was in the hospital dying over a 10-day period from complications, from internal injuries, from severe beatings. Yet she was the one begging him to let her stay. Where'd that come from? Think about it. You have to be very careful what demon you are being persuaded by, what demon is trying to take control of your reasoning, of your decision making. See, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Are you going to let him? Or are you going to wrap yourself up in Christ, get Christ all up in you, in the power of the Holy Ghost, in the power of God's might, and in the power of Jesus' name. Rebuke those suckers, get the heck out of Dodge, and get your life, take your life back, and possess your land, and walk into your destiny while you still have a brain, a body, and your life to do it with. What are you going to do? <laughs>